Hello, um, my name's Elizabeth, and this is my daughter Margaret. This is, uh, I'm Great Autumn Rain on Ravelry and now on Instagram. Um, and this is our knitting podcast. Um, I'm just calling it the Great Autumn Rain Knit Podcast. Um, this is my fifth episode, and I still don't have the hang of that, but that's okay. All right, so starting off, finished objects. I have found my fade, and it is large enough for both of us to wear at the same time. This is the Find Your Fade Shawl by Andrea Mowry, um, and it's huge. I'm going to stand up and see if we can uh, okay. get a good fade. Yeah. Mark, can you help me hold it up? Go. Oh my goodness. So long. She, can't we can't it. even fit it in the shot. Yeah. It's amazing. Um, Mom's gonna use it for Ingress. I'm gonna use it to go to go out walking in the wintertime and play Ingress in it, and I'm gonna wrap myself up in it. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, can so, you So yeah, you can take that off now. Woo! <laughs> Okay. So, it's a chair. Okay. So this is done in seven yarns that I, I chose all knit picks yarns because I'm being budget conscious. Seven, yeah. All right. So this is um, Strolls Home One Evergreen. This is Hawthorne Kettle Dyed in Serpent. Stroll Tunnel in Mountain in uh, Canopy, Stroll Tunnel in Mountain Pass, um, Hawthorne um, in, uh, Tunnel in Springfield, Stroll Tunnel in Matter, and Stroll Tunnel in Cucumber. And I'm really pleased with the shawl. It is, it is humongous. I posted an Instagram picture of it with the caption, I need a bigger blocking board. I could have blocked it on the floor over there, but then but it wouldn't have been dry by the time the people came home from school and the boys might have walked all over it. That wouldn't have been nice. So that's my first finished object. Okay, so um, I have I have another finished object here. This is a pair of socks. Um, the Grocery Girls podcast does a monthly sock knit along and their theme for November was scrappy socks. And I was all over that because I love knitting scrappy socks. My particular knitting OCD happens to be using up every last yard of the yarn I have. Um, so I, whenever a scrappy sock knit along comes along, it, it's easy for me to join in. Yeah. And these are going to be for Duncan. They were, they were supposed to be for me. I was going to make them for myself, but then Duncan saw them and liked them. I so. You wanted them too? Yeah. You originally told me no. I said no. That was Martin. That was Martin. Okay. Martin told me no. I said no. I've got three children. How can I keep track? I will make you the next scrappy pair. Okay. Uh, okay. I've got some pink scraps, which we, that's not appropriate for the boys, is it? It's not. All right. So this pattern is Stash Buster Spiral Socks uh, by Sharon Gertman. Um. It's a free pattern available on Ravelry. It's it's great. So what I did, which is a slight slight variation on the on the pattern, I have you. It works well if you knit socks on DPMs, which I do. Um, I knit these on size one DPMs, um, but you can do it with uh, magic loop or, or circulars. You're just going to need to um, use stitch markers at some point. So I started just with the dove header, and then I added in some of the leftover Sundari yarns, Sunshine, that I had. And I just basically striped these two, you know, one row each, um, and for like three and a half rounds. And then at the half round mark, where I got to the end, you know, the end of my second needle, I started putting in the brown. And the brown is Knitted Spolici in the steamer trunk colorway. So it's a self-striping. So that brown actually gets quite gray out towards the toe. In fact, it, the toe is 
right here is actually striped. You just can't see it because the steam, the, the, that color, that's grayish brown, taupey stripe of the steamer trunk blends in with the uh, Duff Heavier so well. So then I, I put after a few rounds of of just those three colors, I added a fourth color, which was the Stroll Hollyberry, and I kept knitting with those. Um, I just did my heel flap and gusset in just the uh, just the Dove uh, Heather stroll, and, um, and then I continued on, and and around hereabouts, I ran out of the Hollyberry, and I just put in a different color of Knit Picks Felici. Um, it was uh, the Sun Sonora Sunset colorway that I had just a teeny like five gram ball that left over from the two pairs of Martin socks that I made. Um, and around the same time, I ran out of the um, Sundara Sunshine colorway. And so I uh, substituted in the, uh, the Hawthorne color left over from my Find, my Find Your Fade. Um, and that, you know, that was one of the, uh, it was the um, uh, Springfield um, song colorway of Hawthorne. And so the, the green took over from the yellow, and I just striped it out. And the uh, Sonora Sunset went from the orangey color out to a couple of strips of pink. Um, and then I just faded, you know, faded them out of the spiral as I started the toe decreases until just at the very tip of the toe were left with the dove heather. And then uh, on the second sock, sock, since I had a lot of the dove heather left, I again knit the cuff and the dove heather and started striping with just the green and then added the steamer trunk browns and it's a light brown, you know, you can, in here it's the, the taupey one that looks almost exactly like the dove heather, but then it gets into a, a slightly darker, brown, more medium brown. And, you know, then added in the Sonora Sunset colorway, which is where you see the pinks coming in. Knit the heel and the dove um, and then continued on. Um, and I, you know, ran out of ran out of the gray heather, and then I just start, um, started striking three colors. I ran out of the Sonora Sunset, and I had like a teeny ball of witch's brew that I wound off to make another pair of socks. The fleecy um, self striping in the color of witch's brew to make another pair of socks. So I had a three gram ball that I'd wound off there. So that's all in here: the purple and the black. Um, and then I just kept knitting until, you know, and kept striping those colors until I got to the toe, which is about the point at which I ran out of that little three gram ball of the Felici um, Witches Brew and the, the, um, the, the, the larger ball of the steamer trunk that I had. And I finished off in the Hawthorne toe. And I had like two grams of that left. So I used up a lot of scraps. You wanted to say something, Margaret? Um, so did you, you have to, you have to say the perfect amount of yarn to get it. Yeah, yeah, well, it's, this is a, when you don't have the perfect amount of yarn for a pair of socks, mm -hmm. you can just use up all your scraps, right? And I'm but not, what I mean is you, you used up a lot of scraps. I used up a lot of scraps. I used up six to, I like, I used up, I used seven different colors total, I think. And, like, I completely used up six of those and I've got like two grams of the green left and for that's it. more scrappy socks for, for more scrappy socks next time or maybe um you know a repair on something else plus uh, also I really like these the sock blockers I finally I finally invested in sock blockers these are just the nitpick sock blockers because I am frugal <laughs> but they're a better way of showing off the socks aren't they that's what she wants for Christmas yeah <laughs> <laughs> You know what I want for Christmas. All right, so that's that object. Slash heel tie. Yeah. Okay, well that is not all that I've done, but I can't show the other things that I've finished because they're gift knits and <laughs> yes. So I've got a tally sheet instead. So heel tie gifts. I've done oh. four accessories and one garment. Yeah.
Yeah, it, it won't be it won't be backwards. It's backwards on the screen, baby, but it won't be backwards when people watch it. I, I can see. You can see that. Five yeah. gifts, accessories. Yeah, so Four accessories. And one gift. Yeah. That is a total for one five. garment. Five, yeah. Um, garment means like a sweater or a large shawl or something like that, and an accessory is like socks, hats, mittens, that sort of thing. Hmm. I might. <laughs> you I, might. You might know, but mm -hmm. you should keep your mouth shut, little girl. I know. Okay. Yeah, no. And I'm not on uh, several times kept him from seeing the post. Okay, well, it's put away. Yeah. And I'm not saying where. Because we want to keep it secret. I, I want to tell Duncan. Maybe. You want to tell Duncan? Or Martin? Or anybody else? Maybe. Okay, because if you tell Duncan, if you tell Martin, Duncan will find out. You know that, right? Yeah. <laughs> Okay. All right. Well, that's that. Okay. It's time for the works in progress section. Are you ready for works in progress? I'm ready. You're ready. Okay. First one. First one um, is Spencing Before. It's my jewel bag. I really need, you know what I need for, 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 for Yopod gifts for me besides just yarn? Yeah, I need bigger project bags because I've got a oh, finger and white I, sweater. I absolutely love those. The those jewel bags? Uh, I love the jewel bags too. Uh, yeah. Only have like two. Maybe? I've got I've got four jewel of bags, but they're all sock size bags, and I'm it's not working so well when I'm cramming a whole sweater for me, even a fingering white sweater, into a bag that's meant to be a sock sack. It, that doesn't work so well, right? Mm -hmm. All right, I need I need more larger project bags. I've even got like a project like that has no bag. Oh yeah, like that one, like that one. Yeah, that's a that's a good bag. Next, I'm working progress. Yeah, but but let's not get ahead of ourselves. Okay. All right. So this is a sweater. This is the um, Celesty Cardigan by Cecily Glow at McDonald's. It's uh, <laughs> I don't. Know how you're going I don't to do stitches. I'm not gonna do stitches. Look. Yeah. So I'm on the second sleeve. Oh, you can't find my eye. Out. I will put your eye out with my DPNs. Um, I'm really pleased with the way this is working out. Obviously, it's still a work in progress, um, and I still have a lot to do. You're just finishing up. Yeah, I did not. I did not alternate skeins the way I should have, so you can see where the sleeves are a different, a different color than the main body. But I actually kind of like that effect a little bit. It's a nice effect. It's a nice effect, and then they, you know, oh, I need to do a ribbed band all around here. So. No, I'm almost done with it. It's a perfect length. Um, I love the pattern. It's a good. It's a good pattern. It's um. It's like a top-down raglan, but the the increases make the sleeve a more set-in sleeve, which I like. I like the ease of the top-down raglan, but the shaping of the uh, that's more like a set-in sleeve. Um, so the last time I showed this, um, I was just up to. Where the start of the ribbing was on the bottom of the body. I have knit one whole sleeve and I've started on the other sleeve. I've got maybe a quarter of the sleeve. Um, and I'm really, really happy with it. Uh, the yarn is Sundari uh, yarn, uh, fingering silky merino in the bronze forest colorway. Look at that. This, I love this color. I cannot say enough good things about this color. Um, if you've been watching my podcast, you're probably tired of hearing about this color, but oh my word, this is gorgeous. We haven't been doing a podcast in a really long time. Yeah, it's been a month since our last podcast. You know why? Why? Because certain people were misbehaving so badly during mm -hmm. the last, I'm not, I'm saying, I'm not saying you, I'm not saying you. Do you remember Martin making faces? Yeah, it took me a month to like finally get around to even edit that and post that. And I, I think I finally posted it yesterday, even though it was like a month old. Because I was so different. Remember, we, we took multiple takes and the, each was worse than the last. Yeah, that was that was a disaster. It was an awful disaster. It was an awful disaster. It was. All right. Um, one of the reasons I'm finally getting close to finishing this is it's finally cold enough for sweaters. Right. Finally. Finally. Yeah. 
You're freezing me. Well, put on a shawl, kiddo. No, no, right now. Oh, no. Oh, outside. Outside. <sighs> yeah, no, it's it's the weather's finally working. We had the we had the second hottest October on record. It was it was bizarre. We had like October days where the high was in the eighties, Fahrenheit. We're talking for those of you who live in civilized parts of the world. Civilized. Civilized that use the metric system, we're talking twenty seven degrees Celsius. It was it was not happy. I was not happy. October. Not happy I hated the hot weather in October. I know. We I live in. Where do we live? You, Somerville. Somerville, Massachusetts. Oh, no wonder why it's called Somerville. It's so summery. Yeah. Well, it's supposed to be. You know, we live in New England because we like the fall weather, right? We we want fall weather. We want proper, crisp, cold sweater weather. But apparently, we can't get. It. Yeah. I mean, the perfect ideal temperature range for me is. You know, between, you know, for a high between 10 and 15 degrees Celsius. Do you know what between 10 and 15 degrees Celsius is in Fahrenheit? No, no, it's between 50 and 60 mm, for yeah. a high. Oh, okay. That would, you, know, you nice, a nice light sweater will do you for that. I think it's at like a, like between 50 and 40. 50 and 40? Yeah. Yeah. Those so. are good temperatures. So that's like between five and five and ten degrees Celsius. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not too hot, not too cold. Yeah, I went to school for science. I can do the temperature conversions. She loves science. I love science. Oh, that's we went to astronomy. Mr. That's Mike. right. Mr. Mike took us to um to see the Wallace Observatory. Oh, we can, oh you can show your patch. This isn't my. Hold it right side. Oh, well, it's somebody's patch. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Our friend Mike Person is the director of the Wallace Astronomical Observatory at MIT. And yeah, and, and election day was a day of school. This past Tuesday. Margaret's homesick today. She's got caught a bit of a stomach bug, which is and you'll hear her coughing and sneezing occasionally. And but, nose and then talking about yeah. anxiety. Okay, don't pick your nose on the podcast. I'm not <laughs> He's just rubbing it, I know. Um, but we went, we went to the Wallace Observatory for our, our day off school to see all the telescopes. We had to go, it would have been cooler if we could have gone at night, but yeah. that was, didn't really fit in with your, with the schedule. But, but, um, I throw up in the car because I was going to go up on my phone because I was so bored. It was a bit of a drive out there, yeah. The more, you know what the moral of that story was? No. Never use your car, your phone in, in the, the car. car. Yes, mommy, mommy was not sympathetic. Okay. Um, so I did want to say something else about this sweater, um, and it's just a technique thing. Where is it? All right. So I keep track of the sleeves since I, I used to knit, back in the back in the olden days, before time, as far as Margaret was concerned, before Ravelry existed. All the patterns, sweater patterns you could find were um, bottom-up seam patterns. So you knit the back, they'd, they'd usually start with the back, you knit the back, from the bottom up, and then you knit the front or two fronts, if it was cardigan, bottom up, and then you'd knit the sleeves bottom up, and you would seam it all together. And I didn't mind doing them that way, but who wants to seam if you don't have to? So I've really taken to top-down sweaters once they became popularized. But I used to knit my sleeves and my fronts if I was doing a cardigan two at a time, you know, at the, at the same time, so that they would match exactly. And I can't do that when I'm knitting a top-down sweater. At least I would need more needles than I have. That's another thing you can't make for Christmas. Needles, 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 okay. Knitting needles, yes. Needles. Oh, you also... Size fours are good. I use a lot of size fours. Need cotton needles. For when we need to get lots of clothing. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you can never have too many needles, really. <laughs> so here's what I do. To make sure they match since I knit them one at a time. I keep track of the decreases and I'll you know, I'll count how many how many rows between the sleeve decreases and I'll mark which one I'm on on the, the sleeve I've already knit. And then I'll knit up to the next decrease. I've got another progress keeper here. I just finished a decrease. 
and I'll, I'll move that up every time I do a decrease round and then I'll move the other one up so that they, they match and I just I know to count on from this from this marker to the next decrease yeah so I make sure I do the same number of rows do it on this one move the marker up um, and yes I do not own the any 9 inch or 12 inch circular needles I'd love to try them but DPNs is what I have so DPNs is what I use. I've been using DPNs for a long time and I don't find them bothersome. In fact, it's my preferred sock method, DPNs. I've never magic looped and I don't, I don't see why I'm, so everyone's different. I could see why people had would have problems with DPNs falling out every which way, um, especially if they're like me and they're stuffing their fingering white sweaters into a sock sack because they don't have enough project bags. But, um, uh, that, that's probably going to be my Christmas present to myself is, you know, a nice, another nice big project bag that will hold a sweater. Now, this is a long video. This is getting to be a long video for us, but that's okay because our videos have been too short. Yeah. Except for that one video. Yes. Yeah, it's like, it's like 30 it, was, minutes. it was 30 minutes. You know, a lot of, a lot of podcasters do two hours. Did you know that? Sometimes. Yeah, they have, they have more to say than I do, I guess. But I have the cutest co-hosts, so that's all right. Um, yeah, and I'm, I have, do feel like I've been working on this sweater forever, but it's a fingering white sweater. And I was just realizing that I, this will be sweater number four that I've made this year. Not, not counting the three baby sweaters, because baby sweaters don't count. Um, so, sorry, sweater number five I've made, four of which have been fingering white. I have, I appear to have acquired a bad case of fingering white sweater disorder. It's a mental illness. Do you know why it's a mental illness? Why is it a mental illness? Because they take so long to make. Oh. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, Duncan's Batman sweater is oh, fingering yeah. white. That was really long. Yeah, and, and. Not for my sweater, for. Yeah, your sweater was a lot faster, wasn't it? That's because your sweater was the worst of white one. And Martin's Spider-Man sweater, that was, that was fingering white, too. Yeah, that was, yeah, I really tell how, it tur how those two turned out with your old one and not with it. Yes. Well, that's, that's why we do fingering white sweaters, because they, they, they are such, once you finally have finished them, they are so nice. And I'm, I'm planning on doing two more fingering white sweaters before the year is out. <sighs> two more? Two more, yeah. We can do it, right? We can do it. We can do it. it. All right. Next. Okay, so are we ready for another work in progress? One more. One more. Okay. Uh, we've got we've got another one after this one, so it's not the last work in progress that I'm showing. That's okay. This video one is almost. It's gonna be a good length. All right. So first, I'm gonna show the drill bag again. This sock sack. This is my favorite sock sack. Do you know why? Because it's nice. it's, it's it, well it's it, 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 you know it's 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 very comfortable right on there, um, but it's a great size because the a cake of yarn will just fit in there, and not be stuffed up. Not be not be stuffed up. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um. So yeah, the, the the yarn cake will just fit in there without like bouncing around too much and, and getting jam jumbled up without being stuffed in. It's it's just the perfect size. It's great. So, um, this pair of socks is for the friend of the community liaison at Martin oh. School. Hel yeah, Helly? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. We are missing her socks because cause when she gets treatment, she said uh, that she gets cold. Her friend. So, uh, well, let's, well, I'll, tell, friend. The, I'll no. tell the story from the beginning. Okay. So once I was upon a time. once upon a time. No, it's <laughs> so once once upon a time, uh, like a week and a half ago, I was at the school for Duncan's um, breakfast presentation, yeah. and I ran into Kelly and I was asking her about something I'd volunteered for, and she said, "Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't get back to you sooner. I was visiting a friend who had cancer, who has cancer," and I was like, "Oh." Well, that's a great reason for not getting back to me, you know, sooner. You know, half week turnaround is not a long thing when you're visiting a friend in another state with cancer. Um, and I said, 
By the way, you probably noticed, I knit. Does your friend need a chemo cap? And she was like, oh, no, she doesn't need a chemo cap. She's like rocking the bald look. She likes that. But, you know, she she doesn't really like socks. And then she, she, she realized she was kind of asking for for socks when I'd offered a cap. And, you know, so she backpedaled. Oh, but socks are really hard to make. She hit me right in the ego, right? Does mommy have an ego? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. I, I love showing off my knitting. And I was I was also um, standing there with this exact sock sack hanging off my arm. my arm with the previous work in progress sock in it. And of course I was wearing hand knit socks. I was like, no, 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 no. Socks, socks are not hard. She loves knitting though. I love yeah, otherwise I wouldn't be doing a knitting podcast, would I? Okay. Yeah. That's what got you started to knit. What why else why else do I knit? Because you want to show off them with your children. I want to show off them with my children, yes. But I did knitting podcast didn't exist when I started knitting. I started knitting a long time ago. Did and you know? And a land far, far away. And a land far, far away <laughs> called, New, called New York. Yes. <laughs> we can try it. Like my mommy taught me. Yeah. yeah. All right. She did needlepoint. I did needlepoint, and I did crochet. I did a lot more crochet before I. Really did a lot of knitting. All right, so let me show these socks. I need a pair. All right, this pattern is called the Hedgerow Socks by Jane Cochran. Um, it's a free pattern. It's on Knitter's Review, but if you look for it on Ravelry, you can certainly find it on Ravelry. And the the green is left over from the Find Your Fan shawl that I finished. This was my color A. This is the evergreen, the sterile tone one evergreen. And you know what? I looked at this color and I said. My kids probably won't wear that. I've got I've got more than enough, enough for uh, a pair of socks. No, yeah. you would wear it. Yeah, you would wear it. Well, these socks aren't for you. Too late. But. <laughs> <laughs> budgie, budgie. Yes, that's all, that's okay. So I thought it would be great a great color for a grown up. Maybe if I had some hot pink leftovers, that would make a better pair for Margaret, right? Yeah, hot pink. Okay. So the evergreen I thought was a good color for a grown-up lady who um, needs a nice comfy pair of socks because she's going through chemotherapy. And people who are going through chemotherapy deserve warm socks on their feet while that's happening because really, how can you not? Knitters like to do that sort of thing. It's, yeah, but it'll be okay. Um, I'm also going to knit these a bit longer than I standardly make my socks. Um, Margaret and I tend to like our socks just long enough to go over the bottom of our leggings. Um, so that's like a, a, you know, maybe like a four inch leg. Um, I'm going to do a more standard leg. I'm going to do six inches, I think, for these. Because um, you have pants. Yeah, because they're for somebody who is probably going to wear them with pants. So she will want them to come up underneath her pants. All right. I'm just going to get this to my trip. I'm, Margaret said I should tell you I made my own, I made my own progress paper. So, there you go. From, yeah. You want to make a fortune on it. You could make a fortune on that. It could be your business. Yeah. I got my, and I get all the things I need to do. Okay. All right. Maybe it's a very good job. You have to have a job. A good job. Yes, okay. Now I know for sure this is the last one, right? This is the last one I'm going to show, yes. I may have other works in progress, but I'm not mm. showing them. Oh, because they might be presents. They might be presents. All right. Okay. okay. Mm, yeah. All right, so um, I'm a big fan of the Handy My Knitting podcast yeah. by Sam. She's, she also has three children. But she has she has two boys and a girl, whereas I have a girl and two boys. Huge difference, right? Because I have boys. Boys, yes. That means my girl's oldest one too. Her girl is youngest. And the oldest one. Yes. First try to got girls, then two more tries on. We got boys, yes. All right. Um. Anyway, so I won a pattern giveaway on her on in her progress cast group. Um. It was um the Bing Shawl by Knox Mountain Knit Company and. I do not enter giveaways unless I intend to use a prize if I get it. 
So I got the prize. So of course I had to cast it on. Um, and I'm doing this for the knit along that's going on on her blog for the Knox Mount, Knox, Mount, uh, Knox Mountain Knit Company knit along. Um, so this is the big shawl that I've I've started. Um, and I, I've I've gotten a fair amount of progress on this when I should have been doing gift knitting. Margaret took me to the eyeball. Margaret wants this shawl. I was doing it for myself. Um, it but looks so good. You don't wear the shawls you have. But I wore them. I was at the yeah. I was okay. All right. I want it, Mom. So this is living living in my one project bag that's big enough for three color, properly big enough for a three color shawl. It's the uh, from Stitch Life bags. It's my my outliner bag. I love it. I love the bag. Um. So let me get out the colors and you can see. So these are the colors I chose. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about stash management and um, how I chose my colors because this was this this project was a complete stash dive. Um, I do not have a huge stash compared to most knitters. Keep in mind now, uh, I can get all my stash into one large pool bag and a medium sized box. Um, and the medium sized box mostly has scraps. So you know, partial partially used skeins, not not scraps. Scraps are tiny, tiny and um, but if you keep in mind that I made my first crochet afghan, you know, beds, you know, bedspread sized crochet afghan when I was 13 years old. I got that yarn Christmas 1983. Yes, I'm that old. Um, 1983, it was like a completely different century. It was. It, it might have it might as well have been a different world as far as Margaret was concerned. No. Mm, okay. I know it's the same world. Yeah, I know it's the same world. It's, it, things were times were very different. This is before they had iPads. Can you believe it? Um, I can't believe it. They're actually fairly new. They are fairly new. Okay, you're getting older. Well, and they, the first mm -hmm. electronic I was like three years old. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So what I did for what I wanted to do for this was use stash yarns because I yeah you know, I didn't want to buy yarn. Also, um, I have some lovely things in my stash that really deserve to get used. So the first color I chose was the, the color C for the shawl, the pop color. And this is Sundari Yarns, uh, Fingering Silky Merino, and my very favorite red of hers, which is Ember Over Flame. Now normally I don't like, normally I like my reds to be kind of purple leaning. Um, I don't tend to like reds that are orangey, but this one's leaning, I think, brown. And it's got these rose gold highlights in it, and it's 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 absolutely beautiful. Yes, it's beautiful. It's gorgeous. I love it so much. Um, yeah, and Ember Over Flame is the perfect name for it. It's it's gorgeous. I had three skeins of this, and I made myself a, a fingering white sweater. I, I really do have fingering white sweater disorder. Um, I, I just keep making them. It, it's, it's silly. So I chose this, and one of the great things about the Bing shawl pattern is they tell you exactly how much yarn you're going to need. Good! Good, yeah. So it was like 179 yards, I think, for the color C that I needed. So I looked through my stash on Ravelry. I All new yarn that comes in, I immediately put in my stash on Ravelry. This is so important for yarn management. Um, I cannot stress how important enough how important it is for yarn management. Um, and then I weigh my yarn. I've got a I've got a yarn scale. It wasn't meant as a yarn scale. It was a kitchen scale. I bought it off Amazon for twenty dollars, like you know, over ten years ago. Uh, best investment ever. Um, so I, I weigh you know I weigh my yarn regularly uh, to make sure that you know to, so I know exactly how much I've used for every project. Um, and so if I, and if I'm in the middle of a project, how, you know, how much I have left. Um, so I have about 275 yards of this color that's left. That'll be more than enough to do the color C, the pop color in the Bing shawl. So it's going to be, you know, striping and then a lace section in this, in this color and then more striping. 
So I needed a I needed two colors, a light one and a dark one, to do the striping, or you know, at least contrasty colors to go with this. So I looked through my Ravelry stash, and what I did, since it's a finger and white shawl, is I filtered my stash. You can do this in Ravelry, and I really suggest you do. It will it will help you immensely shop the stash and not buy new yarn for projects. Um, so I filtered by but you know just just fingering weight yarns and then I sorted them by how much yarn, how many yards were remaining so I could see what I had that were little teeny scraps that should go in scrappy socks and you know what I had you know you know enough of to do the shawl and these two colors um, you remember those hats I made for Miss Jasper's foster kids yeah. yeah this these two colors were the leftover stroll tonal from those, yeah, from from those hats. Also, I love that brown. Between my legs. It's yes. This is the, the stroll tone with kangaroo is the brown, where, but they don't carry this color anymore. Isn't that sad? Oh, I got one the last. I, I'll share the. I'll share the stroll with you. I'll share, okay, I'll share it with you. Okay, but uh, you have to wear your other shawls too. Okay, fine. Okay. Is that what I get? So that's why I have to do the gay you shawl. Have, you have those pretty rainbow shawl. You have a pretty rainbow wingspan that we have. Oh, can I show that? You can, you can show, you can show that. You can go get that while I finish talking about this one. Okay. Anyway, and the uh, the gray color is the stroll tonal in the pearlescent colorway, and I really love the sort of the the pearly gray with the the, the deep, um, very tonal chocolatey brown, and I think the brown brings up the the brown highlights in this. Margaret's showing off her wingspan. Um, wingspan is a pattern that I'm sure any knitter is familiar with. Oh, now that I look at it, I'm actually kind of missed this yarn. You kind of missed that yarn, yes. I, I, got, I found that oh, yarn. Yeah, my show my leg warmers. Oh, yeah, and your leg warmers. Yeah, yeah. that's. Uh, I really wish this yarn. Yeah, those leg warmers are in the, the, the chroma worsted from Knit Picks. The Pegasus, that's the Pegasus colorway you had. I forget what the name of that. Yarn was. This is one of those long color repeat yarns that I got at my mind's eye yarn, my local yarn store. But I saw this yarn and it screamed Margaret to me. <laughs> Margaret! I was made for Margaret! So pretty. So See? And shawls keep you warm, don't they? Especially when you're home from school sick because you've got a stomach bug. Yep. Yep. All right. Not so, anyway, that's the, that was my last work in progress this episode, the Bing Shawl, and I'm really excited about this, and I would really encourage anyone to go over to um, to Sam's group, um, Hand Me My Knitting Podcast, and, and join in on this, because it's, you know, I love her podcasts, you know, it's just my speed, you know, not too silly, some, you know, some really good yarn and pattern ideas, um, and, you know, it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, but again, you know, it's, it, you can, you, you can totally do this. It's another one of those three color shawls. You can totally do this about out of, you know, out of partially used skeins that, that are in your stash because they tell you exactly how much you need a color A, B, and C. Um, so pick, you know, pick your pop color or pick your stripes, you know, wh whatever order you do it in, just, you know, filter your stash on Ravelry and then. Well, first, enter your stash into Ravelry, and you just, you know, even if you just, if you have, if you've got too much, yeah, you just, just, you know, and start entering yarn as it comes in, and you know, take a, you know, take a look, look, look at what you've got, filter, you know, filter it by the weight, and then look at the yardage, and then you really appreciate a well-written pattern that tells you exact yardages, because then you can stash dive for it, and use up, you know, just partially used skeins. This is the home knit sort. Um, the, yeah, it's not a home knit thing. I, I will, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm not quite crazy enough to, to knit you a fair isle dress that way yet. You, you're very crazy enough. Mm, when you stop growing, okay? When you stop growing. A couple more years. Five. Then I will, yeah, I, I've actually got this, some. This is like, it's one of the. That, yeah, that would be like a, a tuck the heel weight, you know white or lace white pattern if I, I did that. But I'll tell you what, I've got some I've got some dress idea patterns in my 
in my queue. As soon as you stop growing, I will knit you a, I will knit you a dress, possibly even a sport or, 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 or a fingering weight dress. Okay. That's why I do it. That's why I do it. All right. Well, that's that's it, and that was um. That's all I have to show you. I do not have acquisitions. Um, you may have noticed I don't often have acquisitions. The reason I don't have acquisitions are a huge stash. Ravelry has made stash management so good. In fact, I need more yarn. Uh -huh. I do not have enough yarn. You know, most well, most most yarn podcasters they have behind them, you know, a whole you know cabinet full of yarn. You see all these beautiful yarns behind them. I don't have that. Yeah. They're yarn collectors, yes. I mean, yarn user. I use. Don't worry, Mr. Gunny. This is a picture of the yarn. Yeah. Yes. Oops. And I'll show you. <laughs> no, don't do that. All right. Well, don't encourage your brothers anyway. Not encourage your brothers. <laughs> we, we just get into Thanks, Bill. Okay. And I'm not telling you how to get to Instagram without an account. I'm not telling you. Okay, baby. All right, well, it's time to say goodbye, and hopefully we'll podcast again soon, maybe in two weeks or so. What do you think? Okay. We'll, we'll do it without your brothers crawling all over us, okay? And a... Yeah. Okay. Bye.